So this car has failed the MOT emission test. So if you can see the graph. So O2 sensor 1, O2 sensor 2. So that green one is O2 sensor 1. I think the red one is uh, O2 sensor 2. So when it's cold, the O2 sensor 2 is uh, not changing. And now it's getting hotter. So then you can see the O2 sensor 1 and O2 sensor 2, they are nearly the same. That means that the cat may not work. So I'm going to replace the cat. Because the car has failed MOT on CO emission on fast idle, uh, we're going to replace the catalyst converter. To replace the catalyst converter, we need to remove the front bumper first, and then we're going to remove the cat. So let's start to remove the bumper first. To remove the bumper on the top, we need to remove this screw, that screw, and that screw. They are 10 millimeters. So there the screw is a little bit rusted. On the top of the bumper, we also have a clip over here. We need to remove it. Just to use a screwdriver into that slot. to pull the middle part first and then you can pull the whole unit out from that hole. At the bottom of the bumper we also have five screws we need to remove. So one on the end there are two screws over here, but it is the inside, uh, this one, and that one for fixing some other part, of this part. So remove this uh, inner part, this one, that one, and also there is the one in the middle, is it here? So on the other side, there are also two, so it's very asymmetric, so just remove these five screws from the bottom of the bumper. And these five also 10 millimeters. Now I have removed all the five screws. And as you can see, that the side one, so both sides, is longer. And in the middle three, that's shorter. So remember this when you uh, put everything back.
and each side of wheel arc we have another screw and a clip so we need to remove the screw or partially remove the screw and then remove the clip under the screw I seem the screw is loose and not moving out so now you can see I have uh, tried to use this uh, small screw driver just to prise out this uh, middle screw while I was uh, turning it uh, anti-clockwise so now the screw nearly out so that the screw now we can try to remove the clip Okay, that clip. So now we can see the clip and the screw. And actually the clip is a plastic and the screw is also plastic. However, at the right hand side it is not a screw and a clip. It is a something like a zinc coated uh, metal thing. So maybe someone had changed it uh, to this. I will try to remove this. I just pried it out. It's uh, I think it's a rivet. Somebody used a rivet on this side of the bumper that hole maybe the clip lost and then somebody used the uh, uh, rivet to do the job okay anyway i remove the rivet just using uh, the screwdriver so the end of the bumper there's some uh, clips so we need to just uh, try be carefully uh, remove from the clips now I have a pull off the bumper so you can see there's a bracket here and there's some clips here and also there's a clip here there's a clip from the other side from inside of the front bumper so that's how you pull it out so just pull it outward and then they were disengaged and when you install i think they just uh, like this one just the clip into the position to the side there are some holes over there so do the same for the other side so this side uh, there was less resistance than the other side they just uh, uh, clip it out so the clips over here and the other clips over here and on the top I think this one will hold the top of the bumper as well so now after both sides of the bumper unclipped from the body and we can try to remove the front bumper the bumper there is a like a this is the metal post over here so it's just a holding or positioning the front bumper so here and on this side there's another here so we just unclip and move it on the top and here i think uh, so we can uh, remove the bumper the bottom still holding a little bit i will remove it uh, with the two hands so here you can see the front bumper removed it's relatively easy just uh, uh, push uh, shake a uh, little bit uh, at the bottom and it's just uh, out here you can see this uh, looks like metal but actually it's a uh, plastic When I remove the front bumper and I found that it's dropped out from just from here 
and I tried to figure out where should it be, and then I found it is in the here. So you see, on each headlight there are two of these, and on the other side there are two. So if uh, same thing happened to you, so you just put it uh, over there under the headlight. Okay, I found uh, just uh, the two holes. There's the hole here, and there's the hole over here. So we just uh, put this uh, two clip into that two hole and push it up. Yeah, I have got the into the two holes. Uh, it seems okay, but it's different from this one. And also if you look at the right hand side, that's two the same and this uh, left hand side that's the same as the right hand side but this is a different uh, maybe maybe okay so it's a uh, different part from that one but it can still hold hopefully the bumper after remove the bumper I also found uh, from here so this piece of a uh, plastic And this side is broken, and here there's something get into something. And on here I found another piece. Yes, maybe this piece is broken off from here, but not too sure. No, I will try to figure out. So now I know this piece is supposed to be here. So that's the leg plugged into a hole over there. And then the bottom there is a broken piece, and I remove the piece, and this should be against this uh, uh, condenser of the of the air conditioning. So that should be about it, and this broken piece should be like this, so holding here. Yeah, it's broken. Maybe it's okay without it. I guess it could be. An accident uh, at the front end, and uh, broke this off, and pushed this, uh, the bumper, uh, a little bit in. So that's maybe why it's broke. To remove the cat, we need to remove the front bumper first, and then we need to remove that two spring-loaded bolts. Before removing the bolts, I use some wood block to support the exhaust front pipe, that the rear oxygen sensor cable won't be stretched. You can see the rear oxygen sensor is just over here, the cable. So I think if it's not uh, overstretched, uh, we don't need to remove the connector. For those two bolts, you will need a 14 millimeter socket. So now we have a two spring-loaded bolts removed. Next, we need to remove the cat. Uh, support uh, bracket bolts over there and there's a nut. I think maybe we just remove the bolt, lower bolt. It should be okay. To remove the rear bolts, you need 12 millimeter socket. So you can see here, I'm using a 12 millimeter socket, a flexible half inch uh, joint, and an extension bar. And then I'm going to use the ratchet to remove that bolt. So here is the side of brackets bolts removed.
Next, we need to remove two bolts on the top of the cat and the two bolts at the bottom. So that is one. And that is another one. So we're going to remove those. And these also need a 12 millimeter socket. And again, I'm going to use this 12 millimeter socket, the flexible joint and extension bar and the ratchet to remove the two bolts and two nuts. Now I have uh, loosened this uh, left uh, bolts and the other mode on the right is uh, not enough space for half inch socket. So I'll change a smaller socket to cut this, uh, this bracket uh, over here. Just so okay, for this right bolt, I remove the flexible half inch uh, joint and just uh, use the extension bar and the half inch uh, socket and then I managed to uh, loosen it. It's rather tight, this bolt. So now it is okay. Now I have loosened the two nuts at the bottom and two bolts on the top. So can, now I can remove all of them. So these are the two nuts and the two bolts removed from a cat fixing to the engine. So now uh, we can remove the cat, I think. Yeah, it's loose. Yeah, it's loose. So I will try to uh, maneuver it out of the place. I finally got this uh, cat out of the car. Uh, what I did, I tried uh, get it out from the top, but uh, obviously not enough space. And I look at it, it's uh, just uh, stuck the over lower part. So even I saw it, I can remove this, but uh, it seems like uh, not helpful. Even this removed, the air box is, uh, won't come out from the top. And then I try to get it out from here because there's the air conditioning. It's more complicated. There's the pipe over here, there's the pipe here and uh, I couldn't get it out and then I removed the two screw the top screw for the air conditioning condenser and also I removed the screw here which is a bracket for this uh, air conditioning pipes over here and removed this screw and after that and I think uh, you see you can a little bit move the pipe move the pipe and the cat just come out from from this space out. So that's how I got it out. For comparison, you can see this is the old cat, and the weight is two point three one six kilo. So it's about uh, 180 gram heavier than the new one. There's some writing sound here. It's something like a 6406. And here's something like a 1991. And there's also here, looks like a five. For this, we need to remove all this uh, cover, protective cover, and the top cover over here. Of course, we need to remove the oxygen sensor later, bolt here, bolt here, and also the bracket. I think we have a nut over here. We need to transfer this bracket as a protective cover uh, to the new cat. To remove the top of protective cover, we need to use a screwdriver just to pry out from here. Pry out here and pry this out also here. So after this bolt is pried out, we can remove this top protective cover. 
They all have a frayed out this and this. You can see that the broken piece from the, this is a two layer from the inner layer. Uh, there's the one piece broken and out layer still okay. I think uh, it should be fine. So now we can remove the top cover. And for the bottom cover, we need to remove the bolt here and bolt here. And these two bolts also need a 10 millimeter socket. So after two bolts removed from the protective cover, and then we can remove the cover from this uh, cat. I was unable to remove the Auckland sensor when the cat in the car with the special Auckland sensor socket. And when it's out of the car, I just uh, step on this side and I use this reliable Swedish made, very old open ended spanner. I don't have a ring spanner here. And I just uh, use it uh, to get it on here and I then use the a hammer to knock the end of this not a very hard knock just a several knock and uh, it's loose now so here the open sensor I have bought a new cat from my Igo uh, from eBay for 80 pounds. Let's just uh, have a look. This is a box. It's a not standard size. It's just uh, made, uh, I think, by hand. Label. And also this is the inside. When I open this, it just looks like this. So it's uh, just a handmade box. And there's a card inside here Let's throw them away and here is the cat with the fittings so i got the fittings with the uh, gasket uh, with seals uh, with some some screw and, and the nuts uh, over there so let's uh, have a closer look so from the label here we can see it seems like from Wolverhampton and uh, hopefully it's a uh, british made or something and that the part number bm 91263h for ego c1 one or seven uh, the small cars and we have uh, anything here uh, that's maybe just more for delivery so if you look at here that the part number and also you look at here yeah, so there's a smaller part number over there and also it's saying c21 uh, pro 7 to to i go uh, that the uh, year 1974. so it's approved to fit as so what euro for uh, many water so the second part is uh, for the fittings i think this is the least uh, so everything contains uh, in this uh, fitting bag. You can see the gasket over there, and there's some other things uh, we will open. We will open later on. And at the bottom is the uh, catalyst converter itself. Maybe you see here. It's just uh, E nine one O three R. I don't know what that for. So that the three cylinder. From this side, uh, I think uh, it's still the same label. It uh, seems like uh, very light, lighter than I expected. So we can put it on a scale to see how heavy it is. So if I put uh, the 
the cat only onto the scale, you can see that's a 2.136 kilogram. The weight of uh, fittings is 339 gram. So altogether it's about two and a half kilo. The whole box on the scale is about uh, Maybe you can't see clear, but I can see it uh, is 3.6 a kilogram altogether. So now I can open the fitting, just uh, cut the plastic back. So here we have the fitting and uh, it's stapled onto the board. So now we can see this is a catch gate for the cat and here we have a two bolt for the front pipe to the cat uh, joint and then we have a seal for the cat and front pipe. We have also some washers, uh, three smaller bowls and uh, there's a knot here, knot here and there's a smaller knot. Yeah, I think that's the two bolts for the front pipe to the cat, and this is a uh, uh, two nuts and uh, two bolts and the washer for the cat converter. Top two bolts and the bottom two nuts, and this is think uh, washer and the bolts for the side bracket, and that two washer and the nuts. No idea what they are for. Now we can open the uh, our catalytic converter. We have some direction here. It's a very thin layer of the, the paper. Okay. Let's uh, Catholic Converter Warranty Advice BM. Okay, and here it is. Yeah, so it could be different uh, here, you see. Yeah, never find out what's different. Yeah, I think here it's, uh, it's a different uh, from the other one. This is the dot, and we need a knot to fix this. Yeah, that should be okay. Enter the label. And that's the part number. So the BM91263H. And uh, some again. some the again. Here is a fitting suitable for three cars. Some of the cars. Yeah, that should be about all. We're going to put uh, all the protective cover uh, onto this before fit it in. Okay, so inside looks uh, yellow. Okay. Yeah, it's a red uh, label saying so. Uh, it's important to find the bolt before you install the new cat and do not use the exhaust paste and uh, recommend to use a new lambda sensor and a gasket when replacing the cat and the last one, so after fitting your new cat uh, we recommend uh, it's running for 10 minutes at a fast idle or driven at a leisure space continuously for 8 miles to prolong the life of the converter. Now we can have a quick comparison of the old and the new. As you can see, we have uh, these two are the old to fix uh, protection cover, 
uh, this new one that's uh, just a little bit different that should be okay and for the new one and here we have a, a start screwed in and for the old one it's uh, welded on so now I can uh, put uh, all the cover back to the new one so just to note in order to install the cover you have to bend this tab and this tab and here, this is the original shape is very well, but uh, I couldn't make that shape. Uh, this will have what I have uh, uh, made. Uh, looks okay, so now you can fit the cover on. If you don't bend them, you won't be able to fit the cover, and also the hole won't be won't be aligned. So now it's roughly okay. Now I have put the cover on. Uh, just to use the round the file, expand this hole a little bit that way and uh, it seems all right now and uh, two bolts are holding this one and the top cover just uh, hold on there and hold on there make sure this hole aligned properly and also uh, that the hole aligned with the catalyst converter I have also put this um, side support practically on it's down to the so now we need to remove the old gasket. The old gasket looks uh, in a very good condition and uh, looks better than the new one. So we're going to remove the gasket and we're going to clean up this area before we install the new cat on. Yeah, I have removed the old gasket. You see, this side facing the cat and that side facing the engine. It's some kind of a two-layer structure. You can see like a two-layer of stainless steel together. And this is my new gasket. It's kind of a soft thing, but I will use the new one anyway. So far, I have used the screwdriver. I have used the blade, I have used the wire brush and I think the screwdriver can get the big chunks of the things on the surface and this is a very effective and the wire brush not that effective you can uh, have a look uh, of the result uh, at a minute and I'm thinking to use uh, some sandpaper to do more I think uh, now this is the best uh, I can have with a wire brush and a blade and uh, I will try some sandpaper Yes, I have been trying to be patient and I have been sending this for an, about an hour and I think it looks okay. It's not uh, totally shiny but I think uh, it's uh, good enough for me and uh, I will uh, install the cat back. I think uh, kind of uh, rusted or something, the black dot is uh, kind of a little bit pitted but uh, if you touch with your finger it still feels smooth, so it should be right for the cat, uh, for the gasket to seal. To install the cat, 
we need to put this uh, gasket, the new one, down in the hole here. Like that. So when it's suppressed, it will seal. Next, we're going to put this uh, new gasket to the engine exhaust manifold holes. Now I have got the uh, gasket on, so you can remember, so this is a uh, rather square, so this is on the, if you look at the engine, it's on the up right corner. Now I think this is the only uh, orientation you can put it on when the four holes are lined uh, very well. If you put any other way, uh, the holes won't be aligned, so uh, you won't miss it. Next, we can try to manage to put this uh, into the position over there through this uh, big hole against uh, all the pipes. Now, I managed to get it uh, into the position at the bottom into the exhaust pipe. There are the two studs at the bottom, you see there, they get into the bottom uh, two holes of this uh, new cat. This is the side bracket for the cat. As you can see it should be put over there, and there is a hole on the engine body, and uh, we can fix one nut on the cat, and one bolt on the uh, engine body and you can see we have a, a new bolt but whenever you put it on there and if the cat is in the position aligned very well and this bracket will be out of the hole so this I think uh, maybe the cat is a little bit uh, diameter is bigger than the original I think I will cut this uh, bracket so that the hole will be aligned with the hole over there. Now I have cut a piece out of the bracket and also I use the file to round all the edges and hopefully now it should be okay to be aligned very well with the holes. Uh, two bolts uh, and two nuts for the cat. The same is still in uh, good condition and uh, I will reuse them so it looks uh, no rust uh, on the thread. Now I have all the bolts in place as it can be seated on the top without any obstruction uh, after I cut that one. So as you can see here, the bracket is in the hole and everything in the position and uh, next I'm going to tighten the bolts and nuts up so these two bolts and the two nuts for the cat should be tightened to 24 newton meters to tighten uh, bolts and nuts for the cat I'm using a 5 to 25 newton meter torque wrench extension flexible link and a 12 millimeter socket. Next, we're going to put these two bolts into the position. I have got some uh, anti rust uh, grease on those thread. Uh, I have got the two bolts on, and these need a 14 millimeter socket and need to be torqued to 45 newton meters. Now we can put back the oxygen sensor and the bracket. I'm using a special auto sensor socket and adapter to half inch. So this should be torqued to 44 newton meters. 
Unfortunately, there's not enough space because here is uh, in the way. Okay, I tried this uh, offset uh, auto sensor socket and it seems okay. So because this is not in the center, it's a little bit away. So I took it to 40 newtometers this way. It should be 44 newtometers if it's a straight up. I don't know, but I think uh, 40 newtometers this way should be okay. So after we took the O2 sensor, we can connect the plug into the socket. So over here. So I think it's uh, just uh, press in until you hear a click. So if I can use uh, one hand, so you can see, and here's a plug, here's a socket. You just uh, push it in. It's very hard. See, that's a click. So that's connected. And the next I'm going to install the uh, bracket for the cable. Now I have got the bracket in, it's just uh, 10 millimeter bolts, uh, hand tight is okay. So just uh, get the cable into the bracket. So now I think uh, it's all, we have got uh, all the bolts and nuts uh, tightened. And uh, the rest of the things is that uh, we're going to put the front bumper back. Okay, just the final notes. So the first time you use your car, you either run for 10 minutes at a fast idle or drive for 8 miles to prolong the life of the converter. This is the sticker from the new CAT.